Hey everybody, welcome back, and if you're new, thanks for stopping by. Today is another door video, and I will be taking a look at this DeWalt door lock installation kit so I can bore out the doors I trimmed last week, and so I'm able to install door handles and latches to them. This kit comes with two bimetal hole saws, one for the handle bore and the other for the latch bore. Also, a mandrel with a pilot drill bit, and of course the drill guide. This is able to accept back sets of 2 and 3 8 inch and 2 and 3 quarter inch and fits most door thicknesses of 1 and 3 8 inch and 1 and 3 quarter inch, which are pretty much the most common ones. It is fairly easy to switch between the two different back sets with this little guide here just by popping out the black plastic guide here and flipping it around. Same goes for the door thickness guide for the latch. You just pop it through, can stick a little bit, probably because I've already used this before, but it'll pop out, you flip it around, and it'll fit the other door thickness. Now, you might say, these already look like they've been used, and there is good reason for that. I already used these, and I honestly forgot to film an intro beforehand, so this is the aftermath. But Let's get into seeing how these work out for boring out my doors. Before I could use the guide, I needed to measure out where my handles would land on the new doors, and the easiest way I found to do so was to use my old doors as guides. But prior to that, I wanted to make sure when boring out the handle holes, I did not cause any unnecessary chipping to the door faces, so I lined them with masking tape on both sides where I was going to be drilling. Once I had the tape in place, I aligned the old door on top and made sure it was lining up with the top of the door rather than the bottoms, as if I needed to trim any height, I'd rather trim it off the bottom than the top. Plus, the previous doors were cut to fit carpeted rooms, and now we have wood floors, so the extra inch or so of length on the bottom might help out with that. Once I had the doors aligned, I traced out a circle on the masking tape so I get a general idea where I needed to place the guide to get the bore holes in the correct place. I did also measure out the hinges at the same time, but I'll go over that in my next video. I repeated those steps a few doors at a time, just that way I could get a few doors bored at the same time, and then repeat the process for a few more doors, because carrying out a bunch of doors at once and a bunch back in at the same time it's kind of annoying, so I usually brought three or four out and then took those three or four back in and kept repeating that process. Anyway, let's get on to the actual boring with the guide here. Once I had the doors measured and the circles traced out for the handle bore, I double checked the guide to make sure I had it set for two and three eighths for the handle bore and one and three eighths for the thickness, as I don't want to get this wrong or I'd have to buy another door and wood is really not cheap right now. After that, I can attach the guide to the door, line it up with the circle I traced out, then tighten the clamp on the guide to the door so it doesn't move around and I get an accurate bore on the door. Now that I have the guide attached to the door, I can grab my hole saw bits and the mandrel. I already have the mandrel attached here, but I wanted to show you that it can get stuck to the hole saw bit. Even though I'm going to use the larger hole saw bit first, I'm just showing that you can easily get them apart with an 11 seconds wrench and a screwdriver. If you do have any troubles, you can always take it down to the ground and use your foot has some leverage against the ground and it'll come off. You can see I struggled a bit just using my hands here, so I did end up doing that. Anyway, now it's time to bore through the door, but one thing, you do not want to go all the way through the door on one side. You'll want to drill through till the back of the hole saw bit is about level with the guide and stop there to prevent any issues on the back side of the door like splitting or chipping of the wood. You
You can see the drill bit on the mandrel come through the door here, and will be your guide when you flip over the door to complete the boring process. But before that, I recommend that you bore out the latch hole, at least that's what I did and seemed to be the best way, to not have any other odd issues with the door. Now once that's done, just flip over the door and you can complete the bore process with that guide hole you have from the previous bore on the other side. And here's a look at the guide hole that I was mentioning, and you can see the bore for the latch on the side. So just line it up where your drill bit goes in there, and then bore through until it completes. So here's a close up of the bore hole, and you can see it's all the way through and it's even. So that does work quite well, and the latch hole is all the way through as well. So once that's done, you can remove your masking tape, and then check out to make sure you don't have any splintering or chipping. You can see that the masking tape really does help to make sure you don't chip or split the wood when making those holes there. So I'm going to take off the tape on the other side and then I'm just going to show you the process start to finish without me talking.
I ended up repeating this process for, I believe, 12 or 13 doors. And if you ask, would I do this again with this tool? Absolutely. It made it super easy to get my doors bored and not have to completely redo my frames in my house with the pre-board doors they sell at Home Depot. I'd say this is a solid tool to use. Now, you might eventually have to replace the hole saw bits after, after several doors, but they were just as easy to use on the 12th door compared to the first door. So, it'll take a lot of wooden doors to dull these. Now, I can't be completely sure about how long it would take to dull these with metal doors, as it says they can be used with metal doors, but I'm assuming they wouldn't last as long with metal doors as they would if you're just doing wooden doors, and would need to be replaced much sooner. But, I'd say if you're replacing wood doors, I would 100% recommend these to anyone. I'd even do it all over again, as it was very easy, and I really did enjoy the process. Plus, new tools are always fun to buy and use. Well, that is all for this video today, but I will have two more door videos coming up. If you have a keen eye, you might have seen the next door tool that I'll be going over for the next video, and a couple clips from this video. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. As well, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it as it really does help me out. I thank you all for stopping by today. Hope you have a great rest of your day and take care.